And welcome back to Janky AF. Now, here we have a beautiful 2020 Hyundai Sonata 1.6T Limited in an absolutely stunning Calypso Red. Now, this is basically a brand new car with less than 700 miles on it, and it costs $36,000. Unless, that is, you know someone who's trading in another Hyundai Sonata for a Hyundai Kona, which is not at the dealership yet. And so now she has this for a week, and so do we here at Janky AF. Now, you also may be wondering, why am I recording the audio very unprofessionally on my phone, which I'm holding? Well, that's a longer story, and uh, we'll tell you all about it in another video. But for now, uh, we're fighting daylight, so let's take it for a cruise, shall we? Hey. And welcome back to Janky AF. Taking a cruise in the 2020 Hyundai Sonata. Boy, this uh, review is off to a rough start, but we'll tell you about that in a separate video. Uh, we're using my iPhone for audio, so hopefully it's okay. I apologize if it's uh, less than usual. Um, so, a little backstory, a little biography. Uh, the wonderful Jean, who's been kind enough to loan this car out, even though it's not technically hers, um, has owned uh, a Sonata previously. She owned a um, Sonata Hybrid um, from, I believe, two or three generations ago. We'll get the information up on the screen for you that I've been wanting to review forever. And sadly, uh, it had some mechanical problems. Got about 140,000 miles on it, but it's been a great car. Um, so she decided to trade it in um, and she wanted to get a Kona because she wanted all wheel drive. And it's frankly a little cheaper than this car, so it's a smart choice. But while she was waiting in the car, you know, um, getting, a, getting a car is hard if you hadn't noticed these days. There's a supply shortage and a chip shortage and all that, yada yada. Um, they set her up with this beautiful 2020 Sonata, and this is the Limited. It's, I think, one step below the end line, which is the top of the line. Um, and I actually went ahead and built this car online so I can vouch for the price. And that's how I know this is a beautiful Calypso Red uh, exterior with what I believe is a saddle interior, dark gray over saddle interior. And I love um, sort of a two-tone interior, specifically light colored seats with a like sort of everything else dark, the dashboard and everything like that. I think it looks beautiful. I love the contrast. Um, and, and what I want to do with this review is, is set up like sort of a juxtaposition or two parallel stories. Now, Hyundai as a company, and obviously Kia too, because as we know, they're owned by the same partner company. They're essentially the same company. Now you can, you know, uh, split hairs on what exactly the differences is, yada, yada, yada. But they're, you know, South Korea's two sort of biggest companies. They've, they've done incredibly well, and this car is proof of that. I mean, this is an amazing car. Sure, it's pricey, but you're getting a lot of car, let me tell you. Um, and Jean and her late, dearly beloved, uh, dearly departed husband, there you go, Tony, um, and her own many Hyundais going back to the late 80s, which I have to do my research, but see um, when Hyundai even entered the US market because they owned a Sonata when Nicholas, who is their child, and also the owner of the great Scion that we reviewed, um, when he was just a baby, they went ahead and bought a Sonata. And that Sonata was black, and there are, uh, you know, differing stories on that. We'll have to get the complete history from everyone involved, but he either crashed that car into a garage door or at an ATM machine thought he could skip around the line and just drove straight into the road over about a four-foot embankment. Either way, great story. Um, and so they had Hyundais way back before Hyundai was, you know, even widely known or widely accepted as a company. And then Jean owned another Hyundai, the Blue Sonata. Um, her daughter Merritt has a Blue Kona. Um, so it's kind of been in the family and they, they've always gone off to other things. They have a very unique uh, family history. Chevy Blazer, Ford Taurus, Chrysler PT Cruiser, uh, Scion, Chrysler Sebring Convertible. They've, they've been all over the map, but they've kind of always come back to Hyundai. And that sort of, you know, long slow burn if you will is a perfect analogy for Hyundai as a company because I don't know if you remember but when Hyundai came out 
you know, they were seen as this uh, upstart company, you know, they had to build trust as a company and, and famously their 10 year, 100,000 mile warranty is kind of what got them in the door and what got customers to start buying cars. And as you can see, a lot of people are repeat customers. So I just think that's a great little parallel there. Now, flash forward to 2020 or 2021, and we have this Sonata. And let me tell you, this thing, you know, as someone who drives a lot of old janky cars, first thing, and what might help our janky audio quality here, is tremendously quiet. Um, when you're just cruising down a country road, say going 30 miles an hour, which is the speed limit a lot of times around here, I mean, this thing is dead silent. It's really nice. And even when we're getting up to, you know, 50, 60 miles an hour, it's still very, very quiet. It's a, a very nice ride. It's very smooth. I just went over a little bump. You barely heard it. Um, steering is very nice. The brakes are good. You know what I always say? It's not about how far, how fast a car can accelerate. It's about how fast a car can stop. And I hope the light isn't too bad now, and I apologize if it is. We're kind of in the trees here, but it's a beautiful road, so, you know, forgive me. Um, steering is, I wouldn't say it's, it's a little on the heavy side, which I like for, you know, a mid-sized sedan. Um, it does have a few drive modes. I believe it has four drive modes. We'll put it into sport for a second. And of course the gauges, beautiful digital display, all digital gauges, everything turns red, of course. Now it doesn't put your tachometer front and center. I guess it does on the right screen, but um, we'll give it a little juice here and see what it does. Boy, yeah, it, I mean, you know, it's got plenty to pass. And this is only a 1.6 liter four cylinder engine. And as is um, many cars won't these days, they're going with smaller engines and putting turbochargers on them. Now, who knows what that'll look like in the long term reliability of the cars, but it certainly helps gas mileage. I mean, Jean's only driven this maybe 100, 120 miles, but she's averaging 33 miles a gallon. And that's with me just flooring it right there, which is pretty darn good for a, you know, a big sedan that can fit five people. Um, I don't know what this thing weighs. I'll try to get that information up on the screen. Um, one thing I will say about it, and a lot of cars are, are like this now, the Prius in particular draws ire from, from some folks, Mrs. Janky very much included, um, that it has an extremely raked windshield. And, uh, you know, that's, it's good. It's good for the sportiness. But if I put this sun visor down, it literally covers up the entire windshield. So you have to almost angle it back to you to get any protection from the sun whatsoever. Now we're going to pull out here in front of this car. I don't know what just fell there. So it's got good pickup and go. We just dusted off a Tesla there. The raked windshield though is really something. And especially when you have days like this or times of the day like this, when there's, you know, a sunset coming down, the glare just makes it sort of that much worse. Um, and, and conversely, your rear visibility is, is not bad. I mean, it's perfectly fine out the back, but um, that's because you're looking through a mirror anyways. Um, but, you know, that's also pretty raked, which again, adds to the sportiness, adds to the looks. And speaking of looks, I think this car is a real looker. I know that the big controversial bold styling cue that they did was this long strip of chrome up here. Um, I happen to love it and I think I believe it even lights up I'll have to check that but I think it's almost a little LED strip but the funny thing is and going with this slow burn kind of narrative that we're on with Hyundai that cue is actually in there going back I believe two or three generations um, I'll put some screenshots up on the screen but um, that design cue was actually always there and then they just kind of kept going with it and going with it and going with it so it, you know is this big bold thing that they showed off but in, in hindsight if you really look at it that design cue is always there and it's really just a repetition of a theme or a re-engineering of a theme which i appreciate i like that there's you know it seemed like back in the day it's like oh the 70 barracuda they added this or we old corvettes you know they had the dual headlights and then they had the round tail lights and then they had the long slashy tail light and you can demarcate the differences in each model year yet still knowing it was the same car there was a lineage there was sort of um 
um, an ancestry that went along with these cars. And, and I like that about the Sonata. Now, Sonata is obviously named after the musical piece, Sonata, and I think that's beautiful too. You know, it's just a, it, to me, it's, it's becoming its own kind of thing in, in automotive um, lore, much like the Ford Taurus kind of was like a big hit sensation when it came out. And I think the Sonata is like, you know, I would love to drive a brand new Accord or Camry. I'm a fan of both of those cars' uh, aesthetics. And I say that not liking a lot of modern cars and how they look. But uh, I love both those cars. Um, Honda in particular with that big sort of squared off. And then the Camry is very, very sporty looking too. And I like that in this day and age, 2021, a mid-sized sedan can still be a car that is lusted after, a car that is sought after, and a car that's really appreciated. It's like if you make the money to be able to afford a brand new mid-sized sedan. Listen, you can take five people and their stuff in this thing. I think I've been told the trunk's very roomy, unfortunately, because of our technical stuff. I haven't been able to do any of my B-roll yet, but we'll get to that. Um, but it's just, uh, it's the complete package. Speaking of looks, as I was saying, I really love this thing. Now, in the rear, there's a tiny bit of like Kia Stinger in there for sure, which makes sense. In the front, I almost get a little bit of C7 Corvette with this big notch that's coming up uh, the front of the hood. And speaking of which, when you're looking out, you have a great view of the bonnet. I think Hyundai does angles better than almost anyone in this day and age. I think that a lot of cars are very busy looking, but I think Hyundai manages to sort of merge that busyness by by putting the angle sort of in the right spot so you actually have large chunks of the car that are just like a flat area and for whatever reason when the light hits them it almost does appear minimalistic because the angles create these big flat spots so it's really quite impressive what they've done with the styling of this car and I know it may be controversial but you know nothing ventured nothing gained and I, I really just love the look of this car. So we're still in sport mode. You do have your paddles, so you have a six six speeds in this. If you want to shift down, um, the paddles are located on the steering wheel. And uh, you know you can get up to some speed pretty quick in this thing. And braking will sort of nice linear brake feel. You have it instantly, but if you tap them, you don't all of a sudden slam into the windshield. Um, so it's it's linear, but it's also very instantaneous at the same time, if that makes sense. Um, get the paddle shifting you need it. Kind of a gimmick. Um, I forgot to mention, they had one other Sonata. They had a white Sonata as well, which was, um, depending on who you asked, uh, crashed into a, it was like a seven gears, crashed into a car wash. Um, so that's a whole nother story. But uh, road hard and put away wet, but they had a beautiful white Sonata, and that was one of my favorite cars too, because it was very much like the Kia Amante when, when Hyundai was still finding their sort of like design ethos and language and identity. Um, they had the sort of dual headlights, like everything was kind of copying that old Mercedes E-Class or C-Class. That was like sort of the benchmark, and anyone who wanted to do anything remotely luxury did that double headlight look. And honestly, I love the Kia Amante, and I love that Sonata too. Um, that Sonata to me hasn't aged the best. I think there's, it, it looks like a little tacky now. Um, but definitely in its time, I remember it had the Tiptronic transmission, which was a new thing at the time. Now the paddle shifters are big. Um, but I've always loved the Sonata, I gotta be honest. And, and the musical sort of connotation that comes with it is um, very beautiful to me. I like that, it's a good name for a car. I'm not super into cars, being the owner of an X19, but that's different because I think that was a prototype name. Um, cars that are just like the G20 or the X30 or the, you know, to me that, I get it, how you step up in size, the Mazda C, the Mercedes, the, you know, they all have it. But I like a car that still has an old school name, like a Dodge Intrepid with such another great mid-sized sedan with a great name. Uh, I mean, there's an aircraft carrier named the Intrepid that sat in the harbor in New York City. And so just that connotation was, was always cool to me. So Sonata is like very beautiful. Um, and I like it a lot. The interior, you know, I'm spoiled in this thing. So to me, everything's great. You have a giant widescreen here. You have this little beautiful purple, 
backlighting that comes underneath the dashboard. Uh, the steering wheel is lovely. When you turn, you get a camera in your gauge cluster that tells you if there's anything behind you. And then if you put your right signal on, the camera comes on the other gauge cluster. Um, we're going to switch out of sport mode here. And I guess we'll put it in smart, which just, you know, does whatever it feels like or whatever it thinks is best. Probably maximizes fuel economy, I would imagine. You got all your Bluetooth stuff here. You got your cruise control. You got everything you could ever want. Um, and other than the, sort of the visibility on this rigged windshield, I feel like the ergonomics of this car are fantastic. I haven't tested the sound system. It's a Bose unit. It's very well integrated. You know, you have your driver one and driver two, but to be honest, speaking of mid-sized sedans, my uncle had a beautiful Chrysler LHS, and this has got to be late 90s, early 2000s, and that had that feature, that auto-programmed your seat and everything. So it's great, but I'm not super impressed with it. Let's do a little hill climb here. exhaust note sounds in the back um, up front it's nothing special there's not really a lot of lag per se um, it's pretty it's pretty quick when you need to get some speed and go but certainly I think I think quietness is probably the thing you want more than a raucous noise in this car so I think it does that well um, the, this the transmission here or the gear shifting is just buttons which definitely takes time to get used to but to be honest I think for the upcoming generation it's going to be completely intuitive like hitting buttons instead of like shifting a big knob I mean the analogy is right there for you it's 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 buttons and, and digital instead of mechanical like a big lever so you know and if you don't have a manual transmission there's really no need for a stick anyway so um, that's fine it's right there for you I don't know what would happen if you actually accidentally hit a button, but it seems like that wouldn't happen too easily. Um, cup holders are great. The, it, it's slightly driver oriented in here. You have dual zone climate. All the knobs, it does have a lot of toggle switches, which I really like. That's sort of a feature out of the Ford GT. And I like how it is fairly tactile in here. Um, you still have big gauges for your climate control. You have dual zone. If you hit the button, it sinks them like that. Um, so that's pretty snazzy and uh, pretty trick. We got the high on. We got the heat on high now. Now you're witnessing a, a millennial who doesn't know how to use controls in the car. That is, oh, that. <laughs> oh, this review is going to shit. We'll turn the fan off there. When I pulled out in front of that car, I'm realizing it was the phone that went down there. So I'm sure the audio quality is just horrendous on this thing. Luckily, the car is so quiet that hopefully the GoPro audio will pick it up. It's probably dark, but you know, uh, if this is the first review you've seen, then you know that it's janky AF, and that's exactly what we do here. It's very janky, it's very honest, it's very raw, and uh, man, if nothing else, it's the uh, unvarnished truth, you know? And, uh, and that truth is for me that every car is a great car. Um, no bones about it. They all have their different uh, uses and practicalities. We did an island truck, that was great. Um, and now I can feel that my cool ventilated seat is on and you know, it kind of feels like I just sat in a bowl of ice cream. Uh, I'm also noticing some backlighting on the silver trim on the door. So that's pretty trick as well to borrow a phrase from the great JM. Uh, your window lines are quite high. I don't wanna say it feels cramped in here, but um, certainly you're just never gonna get a car anymore that you can set your arm on. It just doesn't exist. The window lines are so high. I think of the Chevy Camaro as, as a car that really stood out for doing that. And I feel like they're just all like that. And it's all US regulations and crash stuff like that. So you can't really blame them for it. But it is too bad because a car like this would be a great car to just chuck your window down and, and throw your arm on the ledge like that. But not to be in today's day and age. You know, if you want that, go buy an old car. Go buy a little Triumph or something. Or an Aerostar for that matter. So we're going to wrap up here. I've talked long enough. I hope this review is <laughs> somewhat consumable. Um, and... Uh, Despite all the technical difficulties, if you appreciate the jankiness of this video, I do hope that you'll interact with us and talk to us. 
Um, we're Janky AF, we're a growing young channel. And uh, this is a 2020 Hyundai Sonata. I'm very impressed with it. And uh, if I had $36,000 burning a hole in my pocket, You know, I might just consider that, you know, the reliability of this thing compared to older cars is uh, very impressive and uh, certainly the fit and finish is very impressive and to end here, uh, Hyundai has just come such a long way from where they started and, and built themselves into a serious, serious contender in the automotive market and uh, I applaud them for that. So with that. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, until next time, Jake, can you think? Holy shit.